Sigh of the Storm is brought to you by Revelton Distilling Company. You can visit them in Osceola, Iowa or on the web at www.reveltondistillery.com. Quite the storybook ending, huh? Not for us, anyway. But you men played like champions. You never gave up. And champions hold their heads high. What you achieve goes way beyond the win-loss column or what's going to be written on the front page of the sports section tomorrow. You've achieved something that some people spend their whole lives trying to find. What you achieve is that ever elusive victory within. And gentlemen, I am so proud of you. Four months ago when I took the job at Richmond, I had a plan. That plan failed. I came to coach basketball players and you became students. I came to teach boys, and you became men. For that, I thank you. If someone walked in this door right now and offered me the coaching job at any school in the state of California, you know which team I choose? St. Francis. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. <laughs> Can you? Richmond? Rich what? Rich what? Richmond. Rich what? Richmond. Rich what? Richmond. Rich 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 Where we from? Richmond. Rich Rich what the city I love? Richmond. What we love? Richmond. Rich 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 what? Richmond. All right, so you can cut it. Cut it. That's what I'm talking about, you know. <laughs> we, uh, it wasn't quite the ending we hoped for this season. That's why I wanted to play that. Brent, what you laughing at? Oh man, you know, just like, that's, I wanted to say it's, nah, it's just totally off topic. That you know, that song at the end that was at yeah. the end of every black movie ever in the, in the 90s <laughs> and the early 2000s. Hold on, it's the, the, other, <laughs> uh, the movie Life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that song at the end of everything too. It's like it was like five songs. Oh man. Uh, yeah, welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> hey, this is your boy, George, lover, not a fighter, Trice. I just made that up. Uh, wow, well, of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Self-proclaimed. All right. Self-proclaimed. Uh, I'm is. here with Big Play, Curve, and Marcus, the big body, Ben, ben <laughs> Pfizer, senior. Big uh, body, sir. Ben's. It's been yeah. a bit, uh, y'all replaced me with Shipley uh, a couple weeks ago. Hey, well, you're out of the country, you know. I mean, what, what can we do? You, you, know, you didn't want to broadcast you, what you told in the sand. I mean, <laughs> I'm glad y'all kept it going. I mean, I, I watched it. It was pretty good. I don't, I don't watch it when I'm on there myself. I don't like seeing myself talk and speak. So I have never watched one of our episodes or even listened to one of ours pod, pods fully through. Honestly, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, but we back. We uh, we back. We going. We trying to figure out what <laughs> y'all want to hear for the next, uh, you know, the summer, the off season. You know, we're gonna try to bring some guests in, some um, some some people that's gonna um, you know, give some highlights and everything like that. But we started off with that clip because you know, it wasn't what we wasn't what we thought. You know, it didn't it didn't end up what we thought. But honestly, March Madness it didn't end up as nobody thought. Like this year was crazy. Like just watching these games and seeing who in the Final Four and like it was nuts. The men's and women's was nuts. And I, I mean, yeah. I've enjoyed this this March Madness this year. Uh-uh. Well, I haven't. <laughs> I mean, shit. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna even lie. <laughs> I haven't. You know, I, I've, I've missed. I'm, I've missed quite a few games, um, intentionally. Um, I, I've, I've caught. I've caught a few. 
Um, but no, I, I didn't. I definitely didn't expect, you know, to be uh, going home so soon. So that that really yeah. ruffled my feathers a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Across both the board, both man. teams, yeah, men yeah. and women, yeah, men yeah. and women, both. You know, so yeah. I mean, I kind of I had that inkling. I didn't, you know. With the men, it's one of those we either gonna get hot or we not. So I kind of felt that with the, you know, the last, I guess the last game antics and right before we lost Grill, and that's an, that takes an emotional toll on the team too. So yeah, I didn't know what to expect, you know. But the women, I just, I just felt like we had a whole lot more left in the tank. But yeah, we did. You know, we did. We cut a lot. We were cut short all across the board, man. Yeah, it just wasn't. It wasn't our, our season. I mean. Um, you know, I kind of I, I hate I hate March Madness because they always bring up Hampton. Hampton is the first thing that they always put on. You know, with uh, the number two beating, uh, getting beat, and so you know, I knew when they played that, and I saw the people I'm like, shit, I don't want to see this. I don't want to be reminded of that. Um, but you know, there was again, there was a lot of upsets, and this this tournament has just been uh, it's been ridiculous. Um, yeah, I. I didn't want to get out that short. I mean, I wanted to go to some games. I wanted to get out to, to one of the games that they would have made it to the next uh, to the next um, level. But yeah, you you right, Denny. You can't you can't win shooting twenty seven percent. You know, right. but you I mean you know you you gotta you gotta you gotta take out that anomaly of North Carolina and and Grill hitting all them shots. You take out that you take out that anomaly, and then we are who we thought we were. <clears throat> you know, it's. You know, it just it just slacked after that, after that game, after all that that was under that win underneath our sails, and then it kind of just got blown out. So, um, yeah, but twenty seven percent ain't gonna do it. Um, you know, so yeah, it it had to be a lot of things that were that were awry that was going on during the season. You know, obviously we're not in the locker room to to know or to figure it out, but it's just you know we we played too well too many times against you know, some great ball clubs. I mean, we just totally demolished, you know, Baylor all year and they look good all year, you know, and then, you know, we, we play against West Virginia at home and lose to them. So it's like, like, where are we at? You know, it's, it's just a thing that I, I felt like we could never reel in. Um, I saw at least past, you know, the round of 64, you know, we're going to have some struggles in, in the round of 32 and have a tough, you know, outing in the Sweet 16. But, man, to lose that first game and, and the way we lost the game and how the game was played, that was tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we look at we look at this year, um, you know, and, and with a whole bunch of transfers to do what we did with a whole bunch of transfers too, learning a new system, Coming in, you know, grill getting reacquainted with the system, losing grill. I mean, it was just, you know, a lot of ups and downs getting uh, what King back, um, you know, late in the season. Like, there's a couple things that, you know, kind of derailed us this year. Um, hopefully, we can, you know, correct that next year. Hopefully, TJ got some things in his pocket, uh, learned mm -hmm. some things from this year. So, um, you know, shouts out to the men's and women's on, on that front. But, um, you know, we, we salute y'all for that. Um, and we always behind you, Cyclones Forever, Cyclone Nation. So, you know, keep your heads up. Keep doing what you're doing. You know, but you talk about, you know, some of these things. Um, ship, roll that beautiful bean footage on that first picture. Uh, so, Jones, regional finalist for the WBCA All-American team. So, we got we got that accolade. You know, Shout out. Next, you know, we, we, we representing, representing there. So, you know, good luck to that. She, uh. She she was doing her thing. I mean, I watched the girls a little bit this year, and for her, the accomplishments our girls had, and, and you know, we had a lot of players. You know, mm -hmm. we, had a lot of, we had a lot of players, and so we, you know, shouts out to Jones. Um, next shout out is um, you know, show that show that next one. Um, that soars. Uh, she's going into the draft this year. She was denied her fifth year um, mm -hmm. eligibility, so she's going to enter the draft. Um, you know, she was hurt. You know, she. She that waiver was denied, but you know she gonna go ahead and do her thing. I think she was she from Brazil or something. I think she's from Brazil. Um, well, we had another we had another Brazilian person. What was a volleyball player from Brazil? Um, shit, I can't think of her name. She's around our time, Marcus. Uh, no, I think you're talking about Shayla. She's from uh, Puerto Rico. Shayla from Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sheila Lopez. Yeah, we get a share, yeah, Sheila. So I saw Sheila. Um, I saw Sheila at Reggie's birthday party. Reggie's uh fortieth birthday party in Chicago. We were we were out there for his party, and she came back and talked. Come <laughs> oh, back to the state. She's still out there, but we saw her saw her out there. So <laughs> it was good. It was good to see her. Um, <laughs> All right, that next picture. That next picture. Uh, you know, we, got, we got Kelsher. Uh, he's gonna play that NABC uh, Reese's College. Game. <laughs> so, okay, that's no, gay. Go back, go back. Oh yeah, you went to the wrong pitcher's hardship. Yeah, so he's gonna play that in that game, and that's gonna be on Friday at three three thirty in Houston. So it's a part of Reese's Final Four um, Friday. So it'll be broadcast on CBS Sports. So you get to see Kelsher play in that one. So shouts out to him, um, you know, for, for making it there. Um, and then the next picture that you had up there, Lipsy. Uh, Lipsy is the finalist for the uh, the Kyle Macy Award. Um, and so freshman in Division One college football is named from a for a, a basketball. Freshman. And what I mean, our 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 back office is what is going on with our back office today? Simply, what is what am I seeing on the screen? Or is it just my screen? It's, 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 it's a terrible. Is. It's a terrible, it's a terrible internet connection on my end. That's what it is. Man, hold on. We got sponsors. And and also, you sent me this stuff like five minutes before before. We... I sent it to you five minutes before the original broadcast. <laughs> you know, why are you calling me out here? You know, <laughs> get back in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing hey, here? Get, get him out of here. Get him out of here. <laughs> who who does that? Joe Rogan will fire you. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't hey, be the first time I've been fired this year, my friend. <laughs> hey, you made a personal ship. Hey, you still got a job, y'all. Congratulations, ship. Man. Yeah, yeah. Man. Outside the ship. Outside, outside the ship. The ship. The That's show. our dude, man. <laughs> Bad news is, is that the office is like two doors down from Brent's place, so I'm sure I'm going to be. I'll be in there. <laughs> I'm going to be going to the gym while y'all eating them coaches. You know, y'all. Be, y'all be, ain't bad for me. Hey, come on in. <laughs> Your shirt. Yeah. Your shirt again. Huh? Show your shirt again. Self care. Mine shit. Yeah. You see yeah. That. Yours. Self care. You, you know. Uh, but that's but that's what's up. So shouts out to the Cyclones. <laughs> Diddy. <said you're> <laughs> uh, shout out to the Cyclones that um are doing some things after the um the season, and you know it's not gonna stop there. Um, you know we look forward to what y'all gonna do next year. Um, whether it's in the league um, for uh, Soars or for any of the guys that are on our team. So, um, you know, shouts out and good luck to y'all on that next level. Um, you got anything to say about them before I go to my next thing? I'm just going on. Uh, just, you know, definitely, you know, shout out to them for all the hard work and the adversity that they had to fight through throughout, you know, the entire season. Um, you know, the Big 12 for the men and the women is, is extremely tough. Um, so definitely want to give them a shout out and let them know every day we're behind them and supporting them and looking for great things. I appreciate it. And 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 on another note, how you gonna how you gonna diss the host <laughs> with, your, with, with, with your name? Just call him George. I mean, well, on, they can call me lover, not a fighter. Why you well, on, what they, if they want to call me like hey. Hey, listeners! Hey, this is our this is our first time hearing that name. So <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> we, first we one. Just leave, <laughs> just leave my, hey, it's George Trash. We just, just gonna leave it as, as that. Oh, <laughs> oh, I like it. Okay, okay. Uh, what, what, what are these days? We go, we go, we go. Figure out a real nickname for me. I ain't letting y'all. I'm like, well, yeah, I still ain't got one. So you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe I just drop mine. Got the, yeah, I'll, drop mine, I'll <laughs> drop mine and we'll be even. I'll drop mine and we'll be even. Names. We just regular. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Mark I'm is still waiting on no mine. You know? <laughs> 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 just call him George Trice. That is phenomenal. <laughs> uh, okay, man, I don't even know why oh, I do this. Uh, <laughs> so uh, on another shout out, we just, we're talking about Marcus. Uh, there's a comparison. You know, not a comparison, but um, Omaha. Mm -hmm. Omaha was in the McDonald's All American game, right. and um, he he had said what he have seven points. You know, I saw Bronny. Bronny is Bronny's undersized, but Bronny was like what was he five for eight three pointers? You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, but he he's undersized. He's undersized, so he's gonna have to do some things because his little brother bigger than him right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, but but Omaha had some things. 
but he's Iowa State's first McDonald's All-American, and he don't even go to Iowa State yet, but he is Iowa State's first All-American since you. Right, right. Yeah, which, I mean, which is, I, which I, is I, totally – I mean, it's unbelievable. I was a McDonald's American in '97. I'm not gonna add up the years that that that's been, <laughs> yeah, but you that's know, right? <laughs> what 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 we've it's 26. Brought... <laughs> <Chill out. laughs> oh, damn! <laughs> oh, wow. <sighs> it, anyways, what what we've built this this program into since then, you know, I I, I definitely expected you know us to be a been to have signed another McDonald All American since me, but I uh, definitely proud that you know he was able to represent. I'm uh, looking forward to him, um, you know, getting down there to Ames and you know starting the season and everything and, and going from there. Yeah, you know? aren't aren't we getting another one in the women's too? We are. And I, yeah. don't, I don't remember her name, but yeah, we are getting another another one for for the women's team as well. Right. Um, mm. You know what I was happy about, you know. So his his ratings, he's uh, number fourteen in the class and mm -hmm. number five power forward based on a uh, twenty four seven sports. Um, okay. What I was happy about when I saw his uh, photo shoot and he had the Iowa State jersey on, and the reason why I was excited about that is because you you know a lot of like, I think I don't know if it was Iowa lost three three mm -hmm. women um, to transfer. They they lost two. I don't know okay. if that third one was announced today. I heard rumors that another one was going to be be transferring out, but this NIL where people can go and, and get money or get more playing time. Right. Um, you know, Omaha is going to, he has options, but he's still sticking with Iowa state. And that that's, that's true blue right there. I'm not going to compare him to like a, a Harrison Barnes who went to North Carolina and mm -hmm. left us from Ames. Uh, you know, they, they built that facility for him, mm -hmm. you know, but that's, that's my guy. My, my homeboy Brandon is actually renting his childhood home up there in Ames and his mom mm -hmm. still stay up in Ames, but you know, um, I'm glad Omaha was was wearing that jersey and you know still rocking with us right now because he has other options. And I'm, I'm glad he sees the value <laughs> of staying close to home, staying at Iowa State, and what he can go there. So you know, with that, you know, you you uh Brent, you got to get him <laughs> fighter, not a lover. Come on, man, what did y'all keep changing your name? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm trying to do a podcast here. <laughs> We're just trying to keep up, man. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make shit up on the fly. Somebody gonna make some shit up too. We hey, we just found a little lead on this thing. Uh, That's, you know crazy. I mean? <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. But anyway, uh, Brent, you need to you need to link him and Marcus up. Like next time, Marcus, next time you in town, um, you know, let him let him uh, let him connect and everything like that. Um, because I think that that'll be that'll be good for him to meet someone like you, especially being the first one. So, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I look look forward to you know getting back and and meeting them and everything, and you know just have some talks about you know what to expect. I know the game has changed a lot, and the, the dynamic of college basketball has changed a lot with you know everything that they have available for them to be more successful now. But you know it's it's, it's really cool to you know have a another. McDonald All American select, you know, Iowa State University and to play for the Cyclones for sure. Yeah. Um, Bro, you eating a, you eating again? Is that your second play? Marcus well, he, Jr. is home. He's home. So, you know, oh. he, hey. he, man, just, <laughs> yeah. he just. Hey, just, hey tell him if make he up for lost time. He get a plate out <laughs> of plate, man. Man. I mean, <laughs> that, that's your second one? What are you eating? Yeah. yeah. What are you, well, he, my my wife makes this this rotel dish, which is you know, what what is that like ground beef and Velveeta yeah. cheese and all, all that different stuff. So whenever he's home, you know, that's one of his favorite dishes. So she make it. So okay. when he came back this time. I bought double the amount because yeah, I told her I told her you know that'd be going in two hours if I don't get double the amount. So a couple a couple you know about an hour ago, he he gonna ask her, mom, you didn't make my plate. She was like. Boy, you don't get in there and make your own plate. <laughs> so that's how I know this is a second plate because he had one earlier. So you know, he, he's still growing. So we got to okay. feed him. Got to feed him. Got to feed the machine, out? man. <laughs> How's he doing out here? Um, you know, with everything. You know, how did it? How did well, they, they, they end up losing in, in the final four close game. Um, you know, should have won. It was well, up by nearly 20, 19, 20 points. And, you know, that whistle mm. started doing what the whistle does. Yeah. Um, but you know, he, he 
he played extremely well that game. He he actually made the you know the the winning play when he drove and dished it off to his teammate. Teammate had a nice shot layup over the top of a guy, and it just you know just rolled off the rim. You know off the mm. off the backboard. It yeah. should have gone in, but it's just a couple inches over to the right, and it just rolled off the rim. We yeah. had a foul and, and you know lost the game, but it it was a real good game, close game. Definitely would have loved to win that one to play in the finals, and um, but it just didn't happen. So he learned a lot, you know, being there. Now he's back. Now um, we have the Allen Iverson Classic that's going on this weekend that he's going to be participating in, and right. then we're coming back. Actually, we're coming back down there, George, this weekend right. on Saturday and Sunday for some games. We got some games down there that's kicking off the AAU season. So looking forward to that. It's gonna so, be a mess. Yeah, yeah. You you remember um you remember Jen Saban? Vaguely. Okay, so she in town right now. So okay. she wants to kick it on Saturday. So Brian Ali, we try to get Brian Ali and Tyson Smith. We're gonna probably do go get a drink or something like that. But let us know where the stuff is because I mean I I'll just get out in the car and, and meet y'all wherever y'all at to come see and play and stuff. So okay. Well, I'll see you the schedule. Here. I know I know we got two on Sunday and okay. we got one one on Saturday, it is like at I don't know, like seven p.m. So, I'm, you know, I'm one of their days work out, we'd be out there. Yeah, I got a I got a coach uh, Friday night. I got to coach uh, third to fifth graders in soccer. So we okay. got a forty five game Friday nights. So that's all I got going on this weekend. So yeah, let's. let's no, no, no. Now, when did you play soccer? Why? So look, I'm just asking. I'm, I'm just my new name. I can't with these dudes. It's my new name. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out. You know, I, when, I when did you play, play soccer? I, I never play. I play FIFA or Xbox. Oh man! Gotcha. I know, I know all the gotcha. I know gotcha. all the You know, gotcha. I know how to play your role. Shit, get off the screen! <laughs> I, I just, if you need some, if you need some soccer advice, I, I played a lot in high school. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I played goalie. I was a, I was a fat kid. I played goalie. I was within the eighteen yard box. That's all I had to run. Hey, I got it. I got this. I got this one girl that all <laughs> played goalie. But look, yes, no, I never played soccer. Okay. <laughs> I know oh, how man. to coach kids, those who can't coach. That's why I'm out there. I'm motivating them. You know, I'm teaching them the basics and I'm helping them have fun. Fun is not what you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> fun is an acronym. It's for friendship, for unity, and for never giving up. That's what I teach them. That's all yeah, you got. You know, I'm my man go to go out of the country and come back inspirational. He's you, motivating you know, the motivating all the youth now. All right, you, get to you it. Out there, you on a beach <laughs> with cigars and yo and, and drinking tequila. You know your life. You just you think about some things. You know you don't know if they're real or not. But you I come, did just come to you. <laughs> <laughs> George Pele Trice. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I talked to him about that. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I'm for it, man. I'm for it. You know, just you know. Oh, the I mean, you, you, <laughs> yeah. You may have got some hidden talents in there in soccer. It's, we never know. It's just teaching the kids. Yeah. I mean, if if you play sports, um, you know, and, and soccer is, is is just regular football. I mean, it's you know, you got the same positions. We seven. It's seven man. Uh, so we got. I'm doing the. Um, I'm doing the two three. I'm gonna do the two three one. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm gonna do. Um, teach these kids that way because, um, you know, it's I've taught from, from three year old up to nine years, so I've been doing it for seven years teaching soccer. And you know, when you got the younger kids, all they want to do is run around, everybody want the ball, everybody go attack the ball and push their teammates out. And so, at this age, 10 year olds, nine, 11 year olds, they kind of play, they know kind of this is the position I want, I'm good, I'm fast at this, and whatnot. And so, it's a little bit different. And, I've been teaching, you know, it really was the fundamentals what I've been teaching. It was the every kid gets a medal type of, of sports. And it was through I-9, which is a great program for kids starting things. Yeah, we have that here, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, so I, I coached for I-9 for seven years. So now I'm actually coaching for the city. So I'm going to get okay. certified um, for coaching kids in general. But I'm doing it through the city because I don't – I my son is 10, and I want him to understand that he's not always going to be a winner. You know, I want him to understand that, you know, you're going to lose sometime. And right. you gotta accept that you're not gonna always get this medal every week because them young kids like I didn't get a trophy, I didn't get a sticker right. this week. Like mm -hmm. I want to get them out of that. Like you're this is real world, you're not gonna always get that. Right. Xbox Pele, you know, ship, don't let them change their names no more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they get up there. 
Man, uh -huh. you know what? Just uh -huh. because of that, I'm about to take a we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Uh, <laughs> shit, who we who we going? We gonna go with uh brown dogs farm first. Uh -huh. Sure. All right, let's do it. Let's, let's let's get paid. Let's get let's get paid right now. Brown Dogs Farm or Norwalk, Iowa. You, you see ship name on there? Brown Dogs Farm or Norwalk, Iowa made hot sauces and dressings. Brown Dogs Farm was born out of the dream to emulate the simple life of Rob's grandparents, who inspired him with their hard work and abundant gardens. Rob and Amanda set out to create a unique blend of fruit and pepper that would satisfy the part of the brain that craves great flavor without sacrificing the spice of the peppers. Sweet, but still packing heat. With combinations like jalapeno green apple, habanero peach, cherry rhubarb reaper, and other great flavor combinations, there is a spice and flavor that is right for any party or get together. BDF also has homemade versions of their classic and spicy ranch that are one of a kind. You can order all of those and more online at www.browndogsfarm.com and ask your local grocery to stock up. Uh, brown dogs appreciate it i need some more hot sauce when i come back in time i'm gonna go buy some big bottles um i need some of that big bottle stuff so i can uh, marinate my food um but joel you had a you had a good question i didn't know there were five transfers i knew there were three or i knew there were two and potentially one more and so i want to go back to that and what the speculation is um from one of our players uh danae fritz what she said was is iowa state style of play is why people are transferring. Mm -hmm. She was saying she doesn't think it's, it's nothing else. It doesn't do with the coaches, doesn't do with the people. Um, but that's what led her to it. And she thinks that's a big reason why others are other starters are also going to the transfer portal. Um, people are great here. We love the fans. Can't came up with that. I just don't think the style of fits how I want to play my career out. Um, so that's something for, for Coach Finley to, to think about. If three of his players are looking at the way Iowa State's playing, I mean, he's losing some starters for that because he's done a great job. But if this is what they're feeling now, I mean, he has to change his style. Not saying he, he needs to go anywhere, but he has to change his style to keep these players and, and find out what the pace of the game is and what the players he has, how they want to play and what they see in their career because that's what the coach is doing, coaching to their strengths. And if they're leaving for this reason, they don't feel like they're getting coached to their strengths. Nothing against Coach Finley, but I'm, that's what I'm just reading into this. What do y'all What do y'all think about – the style of play and things like that, and we losing, you know, three to five starters. I just think this whole portal thing is a wild, wild west, man. And I think a lot of these kids get a carrot dangling in front of their face, and they just want to see, you know, see if the grass is green on the other side. But you know, grass is grass is always greener where you water it. So I don't, I don't know if I, I leave, especially given all the success he's had. I mean. This guy's been very successful in his tenure here. That's that's why he's still a uh, one of the more higher tenured coaches. Oh, we lost Brent. I, I just think that that portal just allows these kids a a, a quick cop out, an e easy way to not fight or not try to even talk to the coach and see what we can do to change or whatever. But um, I just don't like the cop out piece of it all for me. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, yeah, it's a little, little easier now than it was back, you know, when we were in school and everything like that. Um, so, but but it is twofold. Like if if there's, we understand how great Coach Finley is. You know, I I've said before that he's definitely the goat coach there to me in my presence and uh, my opinion. Um, but you you have to you have to coach according to the players that you have, yeah. your talent. You know, yeah. um, I played, you know, <clears throat> center at Iowa State, but I would I wasn't the center in the NBA, you know, but that's where I needed to play. And Coach you say she wanted to utilize me at and Coach Floyd as well, you know, quote unquote being, you know, the best talent to play that position. I would have much rather played the four, but you know, I played the fives and Stevie played the four, which Stevie was <laughs> typically the three, two, three coming in. But yeah. I mean, it, you, you just have to play according to what you have, your talent and the stuff that you have on, on the floor. Our sophomore year, Mike Nurse played the point guard. He's not a traditional point guard. Then when Jamal Tinsley came in, he was able to move over to his original position. And so we were able to put together something dynamic. 
So uh, hopefully he takes this in and he understands, you know, again, there's no knock on him, but we have to, when we have that kind of talent that's in and loves the school, loves the city, loves the fans, love the atmosphere and everything that we can have there, you know, that's something that you got to take heed to. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he needs to do some things. So, um, you know, Joe, appreciate you shout, shout that out. You know, um, we, we have to, we have to figure out how to keep these people. Again, when you talk about this NIL, I just had a conversation with my homeboy Brandon earlier today. We're just talking about the NIL and things like that. And it's like, you know, uh, one of the quarterbacks took his first, his fifth year option and came back and he got a million dollar NIL uh, deal. That's more than Brock Purdy making. Right. Like, you know, it's more than Brock Purdy's, you know, year contract for as a, as a rookie. And so, um, I did see that that Brock's going to be QB one. They did announce that QB one. Um, you know, so they said they're going to ride with him, the locker room ride with him. So you know, shouts out to Purdy. Um, you know, doing yeah. this thing here. Um, you know, get, rehabbing that, rehabbing that. I don't know if he's out here. I'm gonna have to find out, talk to his parents, and see if he's out here in Arizona, uh, rehabbing or if he's where he's at rehabbing that right now. But because uh, you know, his parents is from Arizona too, so he might be out around here right now. But um, yeah, you just gotta you gotta look at this because you know, and that's that's one of the things. Uh, you know, I'm not an Alabama fan, but roll tide. You know, you you just always got to roll tide with them. And you know, Saban's mad because you know he's mad. You know, he's he's pissed off. Well, well he's 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 mad. I don't know how much they're doing it down there in the, in Alabama. The consensus was normally, if you're you know going to be a pro or you're a top prospect coming into college. You wanted to be at Alabama, so they Correct. really yeah. didn't have to do that. Now right. that it's you know we have this you know collegiate free agency because that's pretty much mm-hmm. all it is. You know other yeah. schools are able to compete. I I don't know how much the FAU has gotten for you know in any NIL deals for their players, yeah. but they're in the Final Four because they're probably able to get some talent that necessarily wouldn't have looked at Florida Atlantic University before. This year, mm, so yeah. it, it it evens the playing field a little bit. Saban was really mad at um uh with Jimbo Fisher down yeah. in and oh my god, he was really mad mm-hmm. because now I can you know it's we know ain't nobody competing with the money they got in Texas Correct. as a right. state. Correct. So mm-hmm. you know Texas University of Texas is coming back around in football. Texas A and M, TCU, because uh, they it's it's that atmosphere now. So mm-hmm. we get it, we understand. And in order to compete, you're going to have to look at that in, in today's today's game of collegiate sports. You're just going to have to. You know, one of the players, one of the rookies, uh, one of the freshmen, um, he's a good player. I remember his dad, uh, Kenny, Kenny Min- uh, Minifield, University of Washington. He had a solid, you know, freshman season. He averaged 10, 3, and 3. And now he's leaving Washington. We don't know where he's going to go. But, you know, you got to think that, you know, somebody's going to, hey, mm. Let's let's get you over here, and you know Make we put this kid. and that in your pocket, right? Yeah. And so, hey, mm-hmm. you know, after consideration and and talking to God, you know they're gonna bring God into it. You know, after 100%. talking to God and talking to the family, yeah. you know, you know, yeah. to, to further my you know <laughs> academic career. I'm like, come on, now, we who get what's going on? Hey, you might as well just put the peace sign and just say deuces. You know, I'm, I'm going to get this bag. Oh, you know, we, we try to look LeBron and say, "I'm taking my talents to South man. Beach." Right. <laughs> All your fans, get to oh, it. One we rip. know what it is. We know what it is. Well, and that, yeah. that's the thing. And when you talk about that, you know, Alabama, but still, Alabama's gonna get 10, 10 people in the in the league. Like it, I know it. Yeah. I know they don't. They not. They don't want. They don't need to pay players. They're gonna still get players because they're Alabama. Yeah. But they're gonna lose a little bit of what they used to get because tell Georgia that TCU, they can go to FAU, they can mm. go tell to Georgia that Colorado, <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell Georgia that you know, University of Georgia is not yeah. that far from Alabama. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Tell them that you know. So the boosters got money, but mm-hmm. now, now, now do we now do we change this? Now look, we're Iowa State. We not getting that. We don't have the same boosters that them places have. Nope. We get people that want to come for a good coach, a good program, X, Y, Z. But How you- do we compete or can we compete? Because now the Big 12 has gotten even more jacked with these new four teams. We got two of them coming in next year, and then the other two will be in the following year. 
how do we compete from all sports as Iowa State with our conference having Texas, having BYU, having Cincinnati, and, you know, having this this different, you know, this this difference right now? How do we do this? I think I think you got to bring somebody in that's going to be able to. You you have to manufacture some kind of relationships mm-hmm. to get that rolling and in store. If it's if it's if it's not really rolling because of sponsors and boosters and stuff in that area, there's other other places, other areas that you can possibly pull it from. And you know, it may not be in the million dollars to seven million dollars a year that some of the you know players out in, in USC and stuff is making. But you know, as a as a collegiate athlete you know, putting a couple of thousand dollars in their pocket where, you know, the family back home is probably a little bit more comfortable. They're comfortable, you know, in college and things like that. You're, you're able to afford a vehicle to go back and forth to practice and school and things like that. That's the difference. And the climate that we're in now, as long as this NIL is happening, you're going to have to have that to compete. You're going to have to have it to compete. It's, you, you cannot compete with the New York Yankees and, and their – you know, checkbook that they have, you know, and and you're trying to be, you know, a D2 type of school on that type of level, what you're doing, you know, the the heritage, like we don't, we don't have the the, the Duke University, UNC. We're not those true blue buzz that everybody flocked to or Alabama in, in the beginning. And so if the kids are, you know, anywhere in the, in the neighborhood of, well, I can go here and be a star, or I can go somewhere else and work, but get my, you know, check put in my pocket too. You know, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's about cutting the check, man. And and it's just that simple. Don't mean to make it sound like that, but we all know money makes the world go around one way, one form or the other. So reality, Brent, so stipend, $700, six, six fifty. What was the stipend when you, when you was in school? Man, six, six, what about you, Mark? What was your stipend when you was in school? Do you remember? That's good. I think I think it maybe was six, maybe yeah. six, six fifty. Six fifty. Yeah, I think oh, it was like six fifty. Yeah. So you you think about that. You think about I'm a kid, I'm a college right. student, and all I'm gonna wear all day is Iowa State sweats all day because I can't afford to go buy a pair of jeans. Like mm-hmm. I can't go buy a pair of jeans. So somebody can't even give me a pair of jeans or I get in trouble. Right. You know, and, and so you look at that six feet. Now, I don't agree with this million dollars. They get this million dollars right away. I don't agree with that, but they need to be living. They need to be able to go and, and do stuff that a normal student would do. They need to be yeah. able to go and get these tattoos. Like, I don't understand how they, all these players afford all these tattoos. We don't want to ask. Well, <laughs> some, of the place, some of the places, you know, if, if you're a star athlete and yeah. things like that, and it's a tattoo yeah. part of there. You know, they're you know they'll look at. I mean, there's advertisement and everything too, or whatever. But they're, but yeah. they're not supposed. But but now is it right now? Is it not supposed to? Now because you're why not? Because you're you're able to get no, they get paid though. No, yeah. All right, right now they can. Yes. Now they yeah. can. Yeah, yeah. But so like, like like my oldest son, a Monday, I got his name tattooed on me in ninety ninety eight when he was born, and that was forty five dollars. You know, over there on campus now. <laughs> <laughs> you, I can walk, man, I can, you can't get me to walk around nowhere without my shirt pulled up for them 45. <laughs> man, please. That was my last oh, one. Yeah. Matter of fact, they wanted 60 for the joint. And that's man, I got 45 cash right here. Yeah, I got my boy's name tattooed on. Right on campus town, right? <laughs> right on campus town. Oh, hey, when little George was born, I got this one tattooed on him. That was 99, you know. Right. But now, hey. Yeah, well, that, that, so I always, I always laugh. I think that they should remake like they remade like Blue Chips today. Think Ooh. about Blue Chips, like you know mm. what he was doing in Blue Chips, and like if that movie was made today, what would it look like? Or you know, I've been having this app, this uh, this thing, um, like I want to do the after after. That's kind of my new movie thing called the after after, where it's like these movies end, but what happened after? And it's like okay, now we're in this new world. You know, like Moonlight, the movie Moonlight. They sit on the beach. Like, I never got the end of that movie. So I'm gonna make an ending to that movie. You know, mm-hmm. what they gonna do. But but it's like that blue chip thing, like where where is it at now? What happens now? So I mean it's just you think about some of these things about stuff that was um uh, that, that, that cliche, like you know, Jameis Winston, crab legs. Mm-hmm. Crab legs. 
or selling his uh his uh gold cleats because he wanted a tattoo. So I'm gonna trade these these gold cleats for his tattoos. But right, irregardless, let's go to the next one. Let's go to Revelton. Let's play that one. You know, we got we've been here 40 minutes. Revelton, what you up? <laughs> <laughs> At Revelton Distilling Company, everyone has become a part of the Revelton family. From the Taylors and their daughter who helped perfect their award-winning gins, to the team who installed Lucy, our 33-foot tall custom-made still, right down to the local farms that provide our coveted corn, and even the cows on those farms who consume our mash byproduct. Want to see the farm to flask come to life? Now you can tour Lucy and find out where we take Iowa's harvest and transform it into our finest spirits. Choose between a 45-minute tour or find out even more by scheduling a VIP behind-the-scenes tour to get the taste of the full Revelton experience. You can visit them at 1400 West Clay Street in Osceola, Iowa, or find all of Revelton's award-winning spirits at any local grocery or spirits retailer. What's up? Uh, when me and Brent was there, I think we talked about it on the last episode. I bought all eight bottles of what they make. So, nice. Rob, get at me because um, I need you for my uh, my golf event. We got to do some things there, but um, that's what that's what's up. So, Revelton, shout out to you. I don't have any home right now. I'm drinking old granddad right now. So, um, <laughs> and I love I love my old granddad 114. That's what I'm drinking right now, man. For a cheap bottle, old granddad does the trick. <laughs> love it, mm. love it. Um, shout out to the family back home, little cousin racing bear on the line, watching with this. I know, I saw that she said cousin. So, who is that? Him, that's my one of my little cousins, first cousin, you know, one one, one of the ballers in the family. He he think he got game and can can beat me. He ain't ain't quite that yet. All the little cousins think that, you know. (laughs) Hey, my my son's a story. Tell tell us what's up. Oh, that your your aunt on there. Hey, nephew. that's his mom, yeah. That's his mom. <laughs> That's his mom. She's on too. Yeah, okay. this you know the family back home in Detroit definitely. Hey, got hell, I need stories on Marcus. I got stories from college. I need older stories. <laughs> <laughs> I need older stories. She, she old she's one yearbook. She's like, one of the ones. Old. She's one of the, the the biggest stories. She's one of the ones that that still call me but buddy red to this day. Her, my uncles. You know, my Very aunts and stuff like that. My <laughs> my old school people, like, you really know me from from as a kid. If you call me Buddy Red, they don't call me nothing else but Buddy Red. And, you know, my <laughs> uncle James, James Ray down in um, Atlanta, Georgia, same way. Like, they don't they don't call me Mark. They don't call me nothing else. They just call me Buddy. Look, she's going to put it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, 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 that's families because, like. That's family for sure. I don't, um. Like I got family that will send me mail, and my mail will say Boomer Trice. My nickname is Boomer since I was born. They don't even mm. know my first name. I'm born. <laughs> like I'm like, like George, you know. But I still go right. when I'm home. But like that's the thing. Like you always gonna be that to the family. You always gonna be their little, right. little cousin, their right. little baby. You always your mama's son. Like it's always right. gonna be that. So you know, I'm always Boomer no matter what. Whenever I go back to the crib, you know, I'm Boomer. You know, so that that's what's up. Um, but I want to talk about, you know, I want to, I want to put my, I got to put my, my plug in there. You know, I got my, I got my hat on. It's over here. I got my hat on. So I do want to talk about the fact that we do have the, the um, 100th anniversary going on for Jack's um, anniversary of his death. Um, it's a celebration. It's not a morning. It's a celebration. And so we started some things. We're going to end them in October. October 7th is the Jack Trice 100 game. Um, I work for Nationwide. Nationwide is going to do some big things that I'm going to be involved in. Iowa State's doing some big things that I'm involved in, um, but we need we want your support. We want to get the Jack Trice story mm-hmm. outside of just Iowa and not and outside of Black History Month and make it just what it is history. And so one of the things that you know I want you all to know I'm and I don't know mm-hmm. if you're gonna make it back, Marcus. I know Brent, you there, but I'm throwing on a tailgate the day that I'm not gonna I'm probably gonna be all around doing things, but I'm doing a charity tailgate. Tickets are ten dollars to get in. We got a barbecue truck there. Um, I'm trying to get some of the uh, old school players back. Everybody that was back from the 90s, 97, 96, 97 to the early 2000s, 2005, 2006 to come back. You know, social love, social support, come out for that game and get kind of like a reunion back together. Because uh, for one, for the football players that's listening to this, or people that you know that know football players that played under the lights at Jack Trice Stadium, 
if Jack Trice meant to you or you understand the story of what he tried to do and what he wanted to do, you should come back for that Jack Trice 100 game to show your love for being able to play in that stadium. Not calling you out if you don't. You might not be able to do it right now, but you should come back for that game as we culminate the 100-year anniversary of his death. Um, you know, that's what I'll say about that. Um, it's very important to the family. It's very important to the, the state of Iowa. It's very important to the country, especially with, you know, I was watching the other day. Um, I put on the Jungle Book for my kids. I just wanted something. I was doing some work, and I'm like, let me put on the Jungle Book. It was on Disney+. Plus. Disney Plus had a, a, a little blurb on the front of that movie. It said, this movie depicts characteristics of people that is, is, is um, you know, not right. You know, and, and rather than us taking it off, we let it be on here so that you can learn about the history of what's wrong and why this was part of the culture at that time. And they let it be on there because it depicted the natives in a different way, you mm -hmm. know. And so that's one of the things about let's not erase history. Let's keep it going. Let's learn from it. You know, let's take take these statues down that are offensive, but put them in the museum so people can still see them and learn the history. Let's not erase history. Right now in Arizona, we're dealing with some stuff where people are trying to take certain books out of the school out of the school system, you know, because they're they're not part of the curriculum. Denny, appreciate you. Um, you know, golf in my tournament too, J uh, June 16th. Um, golf in the tournament. Coldwater and Ames all go to charity. Uh, I got a LeBron jersey sign. Oh, speaking of signing things, I was on the phone with somebody earlier today, and that person won a basketball signed by a person on the screen right now. Man, um, that basketball is sitting right here. Hey, Marcus, I, I, I got basketball with you right now. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I got to sit there. I got to sit there. I got. I got <laughs> he won it for three hundred dollars. I, I got it this week for sure. Let's see where's that. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's I, 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 I got it. I got it. Like two years he had this basketball. How long? Two years. It's been two years. It has been two years. The first event was in 2020. Oh yeah, I got to get that out. Yeah, I got to get yeah. that out. <laughs> I, I, I get it out this week. So hey, I, Nate, <laughs> Heberlin, Nate Heberlin won that ball. So Nate. You know that I called you out on here. No problem. Nate, my bad. So my bad, Nate. Last year, Marcus said, oh, Monique be always telling Marcus, go get that ball and put it in the mail. Marcus said, oh, go put it in the mail. Like, I'm going to sit, sit it up here on, on the desk so I don't I don't put it back there and it get, gets hit. <laughs> Denny, right, going on three years. Five years, three years almost. You know, hey, man, Denny. Hey, it's, hey, it's, it's signed. It's signed. I, I just gotta. I just gotta get it there. I just gotta... <laughs> oh damn! But at least you know. Pain, at least you know it's not. It's not. It hadn't been lost, or I don't have it. And I. Yeah, I my go. bad. My and so bad. now we got authentication because it's on live. It's on video. We know it's his ball. He signed it. Yeah, that's he it. Keeps changing his name. <laughs> it's in right there. Uh, you know? I've, I've had. It, I've had it in the car a few times. You know, and things go on or whatever, and just you know, <laughs> drive right past the FedEx, and then I forget and get in the house. Man, I'm old. Like these, these ankles and these knees ain't you know, man, man. ain't moving like they normally were. They, they ain't finally dry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but no, you know, it's, and that's what it is. I mean, oh, this, this, this is Cyclone family. I got to give Brent the sign something too. But this is Cyclone family, man. We uh. You know, the, the good and bad about it, you know, it was Iowa State, you know, gave us the great memories. Um, and, you know, we had we had some good times there. And so no matter that we're not in the tournament right now, we can still laugh and joke about it. But, you know, it hurts. But, you know, we always going to be Cyclones forever. Um, sure. you know, I was in the uh, airport in Puerto Vallarta. Somebody was actually walking towards me, getting off the plane, going into Puerto Vallarta, wearing an Iowa State Cyclone shirt. And I'm like, hey, what's up? You little, he's like, I still live in Ames. I'm like, oh, that's what's up. Because we wear this stuff all the time because it is who we is. So, mm -hmm. uh, but it's funny. I like giving Marcus crap about that because he had that ball I, three years. I was getting on the freeway yesterday and got over in front of Ford Explorer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can see the front license plate and had Iowa State, you know, and then they, you know, I was, I was merging on. So they got over in the next lane and was like going faster than me. And I had my sweatshirt in the car, and I, I'm half driving and picking up my sweatshirt. So he blew us home, <laughs> and we waited and kept going. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm we do that stuff. You know, you want to follow <laughs> that's that's crazy. Crazy. 
Right. And if it was an Iowa f- a truck in front of you, you want to do the right. same thing. Hey, <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I definitely uh, do it when they when I run up. The <laughs> I definitely do it. So, you know? <laughs> yeah. So my license plate out here, I, I I had it when I lived out here before, and nobody ever took it. But the Cardinals uh, football team mm-hmm. is out here, and so I got a Cardinals plate, but not because I'm a Cardinals fan. I'm a Browns fan. But right. my license plate letters say in gold. So on the license plate is a cardinal for the football team. Right. So cardinal and gold. So mm-hmm. that's uh, so Jeff Johnson, the, um, who runs the Alumni Association, was out here for an event. Took a picture of my license plate because, you know, you represent, you find a way to represent Iowa State and everything mm-hmm. you do. And everything you do. So sure. uh, shouts out to them. But, um, you know, we we need some content for the summer month. You know, we're going to bring on some guests. I um. You know, I got mad at our our host, our um our parent company, Three Beers Media, because we're the sports show, but they got Brees Hall on before us. But now, because I know Alan Lazard and Ship gave me Brees' number, I'm getting both of them dudes on, and we gon we gonna have it out there. You know, so Ship, gotcha. yep, thanks, Ship. You're welcome. Say, I'm glad to help you. I didn't say jump <laughs> on. Yes. Fine. <laughs> yeah. No. Did, did you did you see his title on his? Wait, hold on. What's uh, one, of the, one of the geniuses of three beers. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. There wasn't enough spaces to write the best looking bearded genius. So I don't know. <laughs> All three of y'all got beards. Yeah, well, Aaron's is pretty sad looking, but he can't grow. He got the, like the little rat mustache. Yeah, he got. Yeah, right. yeah, he looks. Yeah, it's pretty scraggly. So yeah, plus he's bald. Oh, good. But we can. I mean, he still got. It. He's attempting a beard. So yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that works. That works. <laughs> also, you guys can have those guys because I. I I'll have Matt Campbell on here pretty soon. So, oh, I'm about to get to her. Oh, you know he what? Said, take, take your sloppy seconds and go somewhere. <laughs> he uh, says, I <laughs> he I did that. Take that. We're the sports show. They're old men doing stuff. We're the sports <laughs> show. <laughs> old, beard, old bearded men. You slip me enough Benjamins and I'll I'll see what I can do. I'll slip us up. No, hold on. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Hey, we I, I got a trick or two up my sleeve. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm working on something. I've been hearing that for as long as you've had that ball, hey, Marcus. Hey, I, I, I'm speaking to I'm speaking to one of I'm speaking to, to one of their wives right now about about getting them on. So we're okay. close. All right. All we're right, we're real close. Get, get the wife on board. This is gonna wife. happen. You gotta go to the wife. Go to the wife. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's it. But hey, we uh we appreciate y'all jumping on with us today. We gonna get some content for the off season, uh, more stories from Iowa State, more guests, and you know just keeping you entertained because we don't want to lose y'all. Um, better to be a has been than it never was. Um, I think my guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he gonna come back? <laughs> oh, did he, man? That is comedy. We're gonna keep y'all entertained through the summer. And you know it's gonna be slow months, but we gonna we we'll probably go every other week. But we still want to make sure y'all following us and listen to us. And you know, please subscribe. You know, please follow Three Beards. Please follow Side of Storm. You know, subscribe and follow and like Rebel Ten Brown Dogs, um, Hot Mess Happy Hour, who's another one of our um, sister uh, uh, corporations. You know, support all of this because this is an outlet. Right now, you know, I always talk about this. You know, we are in a, a world where there's some angry people, some angry things going on, but we right. want to make sure that we give you that we want to lighten it up. You know, I look at the news every morning now. COVID made me start looking at the news every morning. The news sucks every morning. Um, I, but I got to watch it. You, you have I to. Gotta, I gotta, gotta, gotta watch, watch it. it. Right. And, and, and it's sad. And, you know, it's sad. Right. And, you know, especially like, you know, Excuse me. The 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 new there's new shooting in the school. There's 28 year old past student going in there and 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 killing six people. Right. Automatic rifles. You know, it, it's it's what is the answer? The three of the guns were bought. Four of the guns were bought legally, I believe, of the five guns that she. I, had. I think they said all five were bought legally. All five were bought legally. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's what what are these things? You know, my wife was saying, you know, if somebody got bipolarness in their background or something like that, you know, you got to do some deeper checks in some of these things. And some right. states have longer wait periods, so you can't like say I want to go get somebody. I'm gonna go get a gun a day. There's like a seven day. California is like one of those states. It's a seven day waiting period. Mm-hmm. No matter what happens, you can go to the range every day and shoot that gun, 
but you can't take that gun home for seven days. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the good things about it. And that. I think even though it, it's CCW, I have a CCW and, you know, I'm, I'm licensed in, in, in 47 of the, of, the, of the 50 states. But, you know, I think even still with a license, you still should wait a, a period of time because somebody might go buy a certain gun for a certain reason. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, something happened to them, but give them a waiting period, that cool down period. Um, but there needs to be some more regulations around this because this is getting ridiculous. It's getting out of hand. And it's like, hey, kids are hoping they make it home from school. Our kids should never hope they make it home from school. Like we send them there to be safe and to learn. And right. our kids aren't coming home. That's stupid. No. That, is, that is stupid. Like that kids can't come home from a place that's supposed to be safe. Um, and we got to really think about that. You know, this isn't a political cast. This isn't a political statement. This is just this, just real life as a human. You know, we got to do something better. We got to be better. And so as we sign off from this, I'm going to say that's my piece. Do better the next time. Brent Marcus, it's on you. Well, yeah, that's tough to follow, man. <laughs> that's tough to follow. I wasn't but, trying to be heavy. You know, I mean, that's and that's a huge part of the reason I've been rocking this self-care shirt just because – you know, you I, I always say this, you never know what people are going through, man, and you never know the battles they face and how they internalize that stuff and they hit their boiling points and do whatever. But, um, you know, I just, I, I hate that. Like, as a parent, I had this conversation with one of my teammates um, this weekend. We talked about, it's like, I don't even want my kids to go to school anymore. And this is, you know, before this had even happened, it was just like, I just, I don't want it. I just don't want to be there. And I, I don't. Just having a conversation about even sending your kids to school is crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? But that's a, it's a, it's a playground for these these idle minds, man. And it's very unfortunate, but the fact that we got to think about it, man, it's a it's a scary America to live in right now. It is, and there's you know, there's not a lot you can do outside of be as prepared as you can yourself and stay prayed up. So, you know, yeah. that's the encouragement for everybody, man. Be as prepared as you can and stay prayed up. Yeah, yeah, and for me, I'm not going to sugarcoat it at all because it is something that I, I think about every single day. You know, when we take our kids to school, you know, we have we have two grade school kids, well, three. You know, um, well, no, no, two. We have a high schooler, and then we have um, my niece and our seven year old London. And each and every time they go to school, not to mention, you know, Marcus Junior, but. You know, he goes to a prep school down in Arizona. Not to say that it can't happen there, but, you know, he's a little bit older. So don't worry too much more about him than, than the younger ones. But the thing, the thing that, that bothers me the most, you know, we all got the Second Amendment that people harp on one way or the other. <clears throat> and I get it. Um, do we have weapons, you know, in, in this household? Yes, I do own a pistol, without a doubt. I, I, we don't shoot it. You know, every you know month or so, or nothing like that, or whatever. Anytime we're back at home, and I take it home with me, I may go out, you know, to, to stay sharp on shooting. Um, somehow, some way, my wife has always been a better shooter than, than me with the pistol. <laughs> but you know, the the thing yeah, of the yeah, fact yeah, of yeah, of, yeah. <laughs> of the but but of the assault rifles, though. You know, when people talk about, well, there's no te- technical. Uh, you know, term of assault, you know what we're talking about. Those type weapons mm-hmm. that are typically used in warfare or, you know, hunting mid game and stuff like that. Because I'm going to be honest, the, the the biggest thing that gives me nightmares and I just, just deep into my soul is what occurred in Uvalde, Texas. And when they say, you know, they had to go up in there and they found all these babies, like some of these babies were decapitated by this high power rifle. And you know, you're being the first responder that has to go up in there and witness that. You know, and even these young babies is, that were just murdered the other day. Like those rifles are so strong and made to destroy. And it doesn't yep. just, you know, kill someone, it destroys whatever it hits. And then if it gets hit more than once, you know, they go in there and and, and these little kids don't have arms or their whole chest is blown out. Like, how can you think that that's something that we should just continuously do each and every day? Now, protect your family, protect your home and all that different stuff. Or even if you're going to have, 
you know, a shotgun or something like that. But a high capacity magazine rifle is made for one thing, a high capacity killer. And that's what it's made for. So that's the thing that I think about all the time, you know, the shooting in Buffalo. You know, I, I somehow, I don't know how the hell that happened, but I was online and clicked on something and it was that, it was the actual raw like footage. Mm. And the kid, mm. the, the dude got out the car and soon and I was watching, I was like, what is this? And then he just upped the rifle and I seen him hit the first two or three people. And I was like, my goodness gracious, you know, and, and even like the, there was a uh, security guard that was in the in the store that's you know shot back at him and he he wearing protective gear and things like that that didn't do didn't do anything to him he ended up getting killed because he got this high power rifle and he's shooting back at him with a pistol so it's like you know if if we make it accessible more and more people you're not hearing these crimes being committed by people with nine millimeters or 40 cals and stuff like that. It's always an AR style rifle or an AK yep. type of rifle. And that's made to kill mo- nu- numerous numbers of people at the same time. And that's the thing, you know, like I said, each and every time we send the kids out to school, that's what my blood pressure is just so high, just warning and hoping and praying that they're safe. And anytime it rolls up on CNN, that day for me is just, you know, I tell my wife, it's been another shooting. And then everybody knows for me, it's just, it, it, it affects yeah. me being a father now, you yeah. know, having to protect the family and stuff like that. So it definitely rings, rings true to me. And it's something I think that, that we, we really need to, to have something done as a nation. And, and, I, and I will say that most of our listeners and followers are Iowa. And there's a lot of hunting in Iowa. There's a lot of guns in Iowa. And to our fans, to our friends, we are not saying mm-hmm. anything about no. oh, you not mm-hmm. having weapons, but talk no. to your kids about it. Put, set, put, put safety measures in your home for these guns. Right. Right. You know, if your kid is, is having a feel, your kid, if your kid comes home and says, I'm mad at this guy that's been bullying me, or I'm mad at this, or I'm mad at that, have a conversation with them and talk to your kids. I think that's one of the things we're lacking is that conversation. Because we let these digital devices sometimes um, raise the kids, and so we we want to we want to make sure that if, if you see something, say something. You see something, do something. Because again, you know these kids don't have an outlet, and if you're not there to listen to them, they're going to go to online social media, and that's not the place you want them to go. You want them to come to you um, for this. So this is not a PSA. This is not a political thing. It's just it's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. And I want y'all to be safe and want y'all to think about this. I mean, that's just, we all friends here. We all people here. You know, let's do this together. Like, let's just just make it a better world. Let's do better. So, you know, from Side of Storm, from Revelton, from Brown Dog, from Three Beers Media, from Hunger Lows, from Fights Legacy Foundation, from Coaches Colossus, let's let's get it. Let's do this thing. Let's be better people. Um, Let's keep that Cyclone family, Cyclone Nation together. And uh, we'll highlight you in a couple weeks. Be safe. God bless. That's what's up.